Hey, welcome and join your blended family. All the B fans out there, what is happening? We are bringing a Monday episode, and this is one that is geared more towards the fellas, the guys, the stepdads, the bonus dads, the whatever dads you want to call them, the father figures that are out there in step families. This is for you. And I think it's one of those things that we don't talk about enough. We talk a lot about the stepmoms and the mamas, but I don't think we talk enough about the stepdaddies. That is true. And so we're bringing kind of how can stepdads bond with their stepkids? How can we do it? What's the key? What's the trick? And it's there. It's one of there's those that need, aren't yeah. talked about. Yeah, and there, there's a need. And so that is what we're bringing today. We're going to share a lot of do's and a lot of watch out for's and tools and tips and tricks and, and all if that you're, fun stuff. <laughs> if you're the woman in this family, then don't just tune out because this is one that you want to listen to and then send it over to your significant other. True that. There are a lot of ladies that are advocates for their husbands saying, my husband just doesn't do this. My husband just doesn't do that. And I do not think you sound like that. No. That's uh, how he hears it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you hear me. <laughs> so, so this one's for y'all as well to give you more insight and maybe to be able to help that man in your life. So yes. it works in all ways. So men, this is for you. Ladies, this is for you. And it's just for you. It's so just for it's you. Just for you. It's for everybody. So listen, we will bring all the goods here in just a minute. So stepdads bonding with stepkids. How? Can it happen? How does it happen? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> well, and I think we have to take into account, and we'll we'll talk maybe a little deeper on this here, but it's not just a cookie cutter method, right? You can't just be like, dads do this, stepdads do this, um, and it's going to work across the board because you have to take in the consideration of if it's a stepson or stepdaughter, that they're trying to um, connect with if their father is in the picture or not in the picture. Their biological father. Their, yeah, their biological father. And then also just that age makes a big difference too. It does. There are so many key factors. Now, saying that, there's no cookie quarter... Quarter. There's no cookie quarter. <laughs> There's no words are hard sometimes, you they know. Are. They, they really are. So there is no cookie cutter formula, but there are some basic things that we can do. And that's what we're going to bring. And then we're going to hit some of these different scenarios and what that can look like and some things to watch out for, some good things that we can do. And, um, you know, just, just to really help out. Cause this well, is, well, hold on just real quick. Cause when we say the cookie cutter thing, and I do think that's what I love about how to enjoy your blended family, which is, um, to me, it is the mold, like it is the cookie cutter, but the way that it's designed, it helps make it individual for each relationship and each child. Yeah. So we may, we're going to be going a little bit deeper. Okay, well, what does that look like? But when we talk about cookie cutter method, this is a method you can use that we're yeah. going to talk about, but because of the way it's designed, when you put it into practice, it's going to help you connect because of who that child is and the age that they are and the relationship you have with them. Yeah, this is kind of like our framework, right? What we stand and believe in. And if you do some of these things, if you take these steps, you will see the good fruit in your family. It is yeah. tried, true, proven. We, you know, This is what has really saved our family has brought our relationships closer. And so, yeah, we're going to take a, a piece of that, kind of what we do, what we believe here at Enjoying Your Blended Family, and we're going to just kind of present that. And, and it does work in the stepdad, stepkid relationship. Mm -hmm. So just kind of thinking of, uh, like about this, you know, I think us guys, we are we can be real hard shells at times. We're not always in tune with our emotions, or maybe we are in tune. We just don't share them. 
You know, mm-hmm. we, uh, you know, a lot of it comes from the stigma of guys and men and dads, what we've been taught from generation to generation. And I really love kind of where we're at in society today, because I think a lot of that old stuff is breaking apart. I think a lot of the old thinking is being challenged, especially mm-hmm. in yeah. in guys and how we should act. What does a true man look like? And, you know, we here, we are firm believers in, in God and the Bible. And so we even challenge just what does God's word say about a man and about how he should be in his family, right? Yeah. And it doesn't change whether you're in a blended family or whether you're in a nuclear family. It's the same, right? We are to love our families. We're to love our wives uh, like Christ loved the church. We're supposed to just be the complete servant for our families, but we're also supposed to be that spiritual leader in our household as well. And whenever us guys step into that role, then our whole family really comes together. But when the guy separates himself from that role, you can really start watching the family fall apart, you know, so it's really pivotal. You know, we all have an importance in our family, especially the guys, you know, we have an importance and a lot of guys just step back. We, you know, it's easy for us to put ourselves in the driver's seat or not in the driver's seat, but, uh, sometimes we get into our own vehicle, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and it's kind of like, yeah, I, you know, I go to work. I work 40 hours a week or I work 50 hours a week. I do my job. I pour everything that I have into work because we let work define us in a sense. Uh, And then whenever I come home, it's like, hey, I won the bread. I'm going to sit down and watch TV now, you know, Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and then we don't, you know, we don't give anything to our family. Our family gets our leftovers. Yeah, you don't engage. We don't. And it's, it's very easy for us guys to fall into that, to fall into that mindset and, Honestly, we can get selfish, you know, if we think about it and we think about our actions, we believe sometimes that it's benefiting our family, that we're doing it for our family, but really, are we, you know, are we doing it for ourselves? Are we doing it for our own status? You know, what are we really working for? Uh, And so, you know, as a guy, it's easy for us to fall into that. So I say all that just to uh, let the guys know that's an easy trap for us to fall into, right? I think in a nuclear family and in a blended family that that's an issue as a whole in general for men to kind of check out and let women, which I see it's changing. Like you were saying earlier, it is changing and people are starting to step up. It's not you babysitting your kids. They are your children, (laughs) right? Right. That you are just participating in the raising of the kids. And so I do see that just as an overall, seeing a little shift there and changing our mindset. But also, I think part of that comes when you're in a step family. And if it's hard at home, you find yourself not wanting to be home as much because then you have to deal with all the crap that comes along with it. And it's easier to take on the extra hours instead of coming home and having to deal with all the emotions that are taking place in the house. So yeah, really for men, just to really put that in perspective and ask yourself the hard questions about the contribution, not just financially for your family, but emotionally and connecting as well. Yeah. And that's one thing that we do, you know, I mean, we play just as important role. If we check out emotionally in our family, our family will fall apart because then that leaves our wives having to try to step up and, and accommodate us not being there emotionally. And so they're having to overcompensate and it just, it spirals down, you know, they're, especially in a blended family where there's already divisions and things. If we're not being a part of that and we're not helping being that helpmate to our spouse, then it will. Our family will fall apart. So, yeah, I, I hope, guys, you hear this. You you play. Basically, what I'm saying is you are important. You know, you are so important yeah. to your family. Your family needs you. Your kids need you. Your bonus kids, your stepkids, they need you. They need you plugged in and they need you engaged. It's very important. And not to be the dominant uh, dictator, 
but to be the helper, right? To be the servant, to be the one that is coming alongside your wife and saying, hey, we're a team here. Mm -hmm. Let's work through this together. Let's figure this out together. It's not my way or the highway. It's our way. You know, let's figure out our way to make this family just all that it can be. That almost sounded like a, be all that you can be. Like a- (laughs) In uh, the R. Yeah. Let me ask you this though, before we get into- the ways that stepfathers can connect with their stepchildren. You being the, the stepdad in our family uh, and having two stepchildren and, and then even a foster adopted daughter, what stops you? I think in some ways you, you did a great job of being the, the father in our home. But I think there are some ways also that had you been a little more proactive in building that relationship, then they would have become stronger earlier on. So what stopped you from being all in? Yeah, so I think initially it's just lack of information. You know, it's, it's you don't know how. You know, and I, I think that's kind of what leads all of this. You don't know how to build the relationships because for one, it's awkward. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's awkward coming in. And, and like in our situation, uh, our kids, they had a biological father. And although there were, you know, times when he was a part of their lives and times when he wasn't a part of their lives, they still, you know, looked at him and looked at that role. And so... For a bonus dad, I think it's easier for us to not know how to navigate that, to be like, am I overstepping bounds? Am I not? Do they want a relationship with me? Do they not want a relationship with me? Uh, You know, and it's kind of one of those that if I had more information at the time, I think I would have handled things a lot better. I think I would have been more intentional on building the relationships. And I think that's what it all comes down to is it comes down to lack of intentionality that we just put ourselves in cruise control and hope that the relationships are going to grow, that they're going to take off and they're going to flourish. And so we just kind of sit back and wait for the opportunities and wait for that to happen when it doesn't, you know, it's kind of like anything in life. You know, if you're waiting, if you're waiting for the finances to come, it's not, you know, you, you have to go out and work, you know, you got to work really hard to, you know, get those results. And it's like working out, you know, if you're one that six pack abs and you're sitting down on the couch eating your bag of chips, just waiting for it to happen, it's not going to happen. You know, you've got to work hard at it. Same with a step family. You have to work hard at these relationships. You've got to make it happen. You got to go out and do something about it. And I think that's where it comes from is we just, we sit down and we wait because we don't know how to make that happen. And so that, that's really, I think the important thing. And, and I learned some of these things a lot further along when our kids were already kind of growing up, hitting the teenage stage and they were already starting to pull apart. So this is one that even now, you know, it's one that we've got to be more intentional on even where they're at, you know, whether they're kids, whether they're teenagers, whether they're young adults or whatever in their lives, we've still got to work hard at this. We still got to work to build that relationship because they're not just going to come to you wanting to build that, you know, you, yeah. we've got to be the ones to go after it. And, um, in some instance, I think in a way, like I think of our son and he is not really a sports person, but one thing that you did with him is you were coaching his basketball team. Well, the thing is, he really wasn't into sports. Uh, we did that because, you know, everybody else was doing it kind of opportunity. He liked basketball okay, but y'all to have that time was a good time for yeah. y'all to bond and connect, but it wasn't necessarily over something both of you enjoyed doing, right? But it still gave y'all that opportunity. Well, I think like given that situation, you know, and um, I never looked to coach any of our kids as, as, uh, sports or whatever they were in. It was just opportunities arose and I filled in the gap. And I'm glad I did. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed being able to connect with our kids on that level. I mean, coaching my daughter's soccer team for six years, I th- I didn't know I'd like that, but I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that time that me and her had together. Yeah. I enjoyed the relationships, you know, with the, the other girls and stuff that we bonded and stuff. So it was just a win-win. And then with him, 
that was something that he just wanted to try. You know, it, it wasn't that he didn't like it. He wanted yeah. to try a sport and he saw that and he was like, yeah, I want to do that. I want to be a part of it. And, you know, I think that's one thing that we did great at. We never forced yeah. our kids to do anything, but we gave them opportunities. And if they wanted to do it, hey, we're all in for them. And so, yeah, that was just kind of one of those that I've always enjoyed basketball. You know, I, I do. I, I enjoy playing the game and everything. So it was not that both of us didn't like it. We both did, you know, and he wanted to try it. And, you know, I'm like, well, okay, yeah. they needed a coach. So, hey, let's do this together. And so, you know, I think that was fun. I think it was a fun thing. It was some fun opportunities. And then later on we brought uh, his uncle in and me and nice him coached yeah. together. And, you know, it just really gave us that time together to where we could bond and stuff. So, no, I, I think those were great things. And, you know, that that's one thing I always look at, you know, just some of the ways that we bonded and stuff and and so yeah it's one of those that uh you know let, let's get into the heart of it you know there there's i think with stepdads uh okay well before we get into the heart of it i tell you what let's let's, let's go a, let's take a break and then we're going to get into the heart of it okay. we're going to dive good deep idea, into a, the heart sound good yeah. all right we'll be back in just a second blended families can be hard at times can't they have you ever said i don't feel like me and my spouse are connecting or I'm bending over backwards and my stepkid still pushes me away. Or do you feel like your family's doing okay, but you'd like it to be more than okay? You want your family to level up, take it to an even stronger level. The truth is we're all looking for more joy and happiness in our lives. So how do we start seeing that in our blended family? Because really our family is the first place we should truly be enjoying and having the most fun with. So how do you enjoy your blended family? You create more fun opportunities that your family loves doing. These are big things. They're small things, things that cost money, things that don't cost money. But the more fun you have together, the less blended family drama you'll have, which equals more joy and happiness for everyone. Now, you may be saying, yeah, but I don't know how to do that. I don't even know where to start. That's okay. We walk you through five fun dates you get to have with your family. These days help you discover those fun things your family loves doing. You'll walk away with so many more great ideas and have an amazing, easy plan to make it happen and to keep it going. Plus, you get to have a lot of fun discovering all this in the process. We walk you through everything and make it really fun and easy. So how do you enjoy your blended family? By going on these five dates and discovering fun in your step family. You'll be so glad you did. Have more fun together and you'll see less problems. The link to get started on this amazing journey is in the show notes of this episode. All right, so diving into the heart. You know, we've had a few people reach out and, you know, whenever they, they say this, it hits home because it's easy for us. It's easy for us guys, but we've heard before like, well, my my, my husband, he's just not connecting with my my kids, my my biological kids. So he's not connecting with the stepkids, right? And so much so that he he's tried before, but there's so much rejection that he's done. He's just he's quitting. He's like, I'm yeah. not I'm not gonna do anything now. I'm not gonna approach a relationship and I'm just gonna sit back and you know if they want a relationship with me, they can come to me. Right. And kind of talking that's that guy mentality that that easy trap that us guys can fall into. Yeah, and we see that a lot. Yeah, we do. And the the thing that, you know, I wanna challenge any guy on that because I've challenged I've had to challenge myself in this as well, is I have to ask myself this question who's the mature one? Right. Mm -hmm. Who's the mature person, me or the growing teenager who is still trying to figure out life and figure out their identity and who they are. Right. Yeah. Who Who's the more mature one who is the, the preteen who is getting bullied at school or trying yeah. to be a part of a friend group and uh, their parents have just split divorce. And now their mom's seeing somebody else and is in this new relationship and doesn't know how, you know, what in the world is going on. Who's the more mature one? You know, and I've got to ask myself those questions because it's easy for me to fall back into a kid mindset and be like, well, it's not, they're not wanting to play with me, so I'm not playing with them, you know? And we're not just picking on, I mean, we are I'm picking today, on me. picking on stepdads, picking on yeah, Randall, sure. but I mean, we, this 
same thing is true for stepmoms and biological moms. But today's episode is about stepdads. So being the adult in this picture. Yeah. And so, you know, I think it's easy for us as adults to even get into that kid mentality of, of, you know, I'm tried, but they rejected me. And so I might've tried again, they rejected me. So I'm done, you know, and, no. and it's kind of like, check out, you know, screw this. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, we, it's easy for us to get into yeah. that mindset, but that's where I have to challenge myself and really remind myself who's the mature one and what is the long game. And I think that's what it all boils down to. So often in a blended family, we think of the short game. We think of the here, the now, now, what is this relationship looking like? What do I want it to look like? It doesn't match what I want it to look like. So I'm done. I don't know what else to do. I tried, you know, out. I'm going to go do my thing. I'm going to go play golf, (laughs) you know? Uh, But We forget about the long game. The long game is what really will benefit anybody in a blended family. And the the long game is sitting there saying, okay, the relationship that we're having now isn't what I want it to look like, but where do I want it to look like five years from now, 10 years from now? And it comes back from, I got to be there, you know? And, And what I realized is that our kids are struggling whether they know it or not, you know, even in a normal family, they're struggling, you know, through all these ages because they're growing up. They're going from immaturity to trying to be mature. And they're trying to figure out what does that look like. And then the older they get, the more choices they have, the more experiences they undergo. And so they're really trying to figure out life. They're pushing the envelope with their parents. And so there's a lot of struggles that they have. But I've learned that whenever I check out, they push away completely and it really is damaging to the relationships. The long game will never have a good relationship. Um, but if I engage, if I be the man of the house, if I be the spiritual leader, if I stand in my place and say, listen, I am here. Uh, if they're, if their biological father's still in the picture, you're not getting in between that, right? You're sitting there still saying, you know, I am a father figure here for you. I get to be that bonus parent and I love you. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here for you. And, you know, I'm going to keep trying. I'm always going to try for you. You know, yeah. and whenever I approach it that way, you're going to get met with resistance because that's just a natural process. But when I continue to stand firm on that and I continue to stand firm in love, their walls will start softening, their hearts will soften, the walls will start coming down. And then before long, they're sitting there realizing, hey, they love me. They keep trying. And uh, I know they're not going to leave me. And I think a lot of that is the fear for them is, you know, this new person, are they really going to stick around? Because I thought my dad was going to stick around too. And uh, they didn't, you know, (laughs) and, you know, so there's already this fear of them already being rejected. So they come at it from that stance, from a rejection stance, whether that's the case or not, normally it's not, that's just how they feel. Right. But whenever I become that bonus parent that's sitting there standing my ground saying, I love you. I'm here for you. I'm not leaving. You know, I, 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 I will, Try and try and try. So, you know, yeah. and whenever I do that, I guarantee you that's the long game move. That's the long game play, and their hearts will soften. And before you know it, when you do that, then years later, you're going to have the best relationships you've ever had, you know, because they know you are that father figure in their life. You never left them, you were always there for them. And it's just, it's become something really beautiful. So, that I think that's kind of the encouragement is never quit. You know, don't, don't quit on them, uh, because even though they may present to you that they want you to, they don't, they don't want you to quit. You know, even though they may voice and they may say it, that may be what's on the front side, but deep in their heart, they're sitting there saying, please don't quit on me. I need you. You Yeah. And especially when it gets into those trying teenage years where you see that. So this relationship might cycle through these different connection points as well. Like it may be fine and dandy in the beginning because maybe they're younger when y'all get together. And so the stepdad and the stepchild um, bond easily, but then they start going into that preteen teenage years and they begin to push back like they would in any 
parent relationship, but sometimes certain people in the family are just easier targets. And so they began to push back, especially if they see that the grass might be greener on the other side and go and live with their other parent. They may begin to push you away or there's so many different reasons why in a step family, a child may, you know, feel that guilt for their biological parents. They push you away. But as long as you continue to keep with that, like Randall's saying, trying and attempting it comes back full circle so don't get in your head like we used to have a great relationship but now it sucks now we have no relationship it doesn't have to stay there even if it gets to that point just because your kids turn 18 it's not like your step family ends when they turn 18 you still have another 40 something years left in their life and you want that to be a good positive relationship moving forward so continuing to even Um, connect even after their 18th birthday. Yeah, because I think we get stuck, like I said, in that mentality of the short game saying, well, once they turn 18, then they can go do their thing, and then me and, you know, their mom will go do our thing. And, you know, that's not the case, you know, and that's not the long game. They're still a part of your life, and they always will be. And how you maneuver now is how the results and the fruit will be later. And if you want it to where it's healthy and, you know, now I I love it, you know, because, you know, all of our kids, they still come to me, you know, they come to me, young adults now, they're coming to me more than they ever have before. They actually have, like, (laughs) yes. I feel like this is y'all's season. (laughs) Yeah, no, and, you know, that's the great thing because, you know, we may not have growing up with all the heartaches and stuff, we may not have had the best, strongest relationships, but... I was always there. I was consistent. I was always there in love. I always showed up. You know, I never pulled back. I mean, I I was there and they knew that and they know that. And so that's what's really allowed now in these seasons for our relationships to blossom the way that they have, you know, because I put in the work and I was there. I didn't pull out, you know, and so that's, that's kind of what I learned through that whole process. Now I wish I had done, I'm, I'm fixing to give you a few tools and tips and tricks here in just a second that you can take and run, but I wish I would have known these earlier because I could have implemented those and had our relationships even stronger than what they are now. But I guarantee though, when you don't give up and you show up and you continue showing up in love, you know, and you continue, uh, just being that father figure in, in your house and saying, you know, I'm here for you. I'm, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm gonna love y'all. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm your father too, you know, and, you know, I never force that relationship. Right. But, you know, I let them know I am, I'm here. I'm that father figure and I love you. I'm not going anywhere. You know, what can I do for you? You know, and the the thing is, like I said, you will get met with rejection and I'll, you, you almost have to take it like a game, you know, initially, like if you're just starting those relationships with your kids, you know, think of it as a game. You know, if you're a guy listening, you know, it's kind of one of those, get the short game out game or a video game. Just a game, just any, any game. type of game, right? Any game. Okay. Any game. This is the blended family game. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you think of it as a game, right? And this helps. This helps our mindset. This helps our, our mental state. Um, just knowing, okay, get the short game out, out of the window. I mean, it's not even about our relationship right here, right now. It's where I want it to be. I want our relationships five, 10 years from now to be amazing. I want us just to come together, have a lot of fun, do a lot of cool things together. I, I want that. That's the end game. That's what I want our relationships. So now I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm, you know, there and and I'm saying, Hey, you want to go do this? No, I don't don't want it. You're not my dad. Okay, cool. Well, listen, I I love you. (laughs) I love you. And I'm here for you. Okay. Just let me know. I'm, I'm always here. And then I'm going away going, okay, that one didn't work, but they knew I planted that seed. I put a seed right up in there (laughs) and then I'm coming back and then I'm trying something a little later. I'm like, Hey, you want to go do this? And they're like, no, I'm you're not my dad. All right, that's fine. I love you. You know, you're awesome. I believe in you. You're doing really good. And they're like, going to look at you like, what? You're weird. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm like, I know that's cool. I know. (laughs) (laughs) And then I'm backing up and I'm like, boom, two seeds planted because I know the long game, when I continue doing this, their walls are going to break down. One day, I'm going to come up there and, hey, you want to go do this? And they'll be like, yeah, why not? And you're like, oh, jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> I got one. <laughs> but, you know, that's that's what it is. You know, we almost have to think of it like a game. Like, if I get rejected, that's cool. Okay. That's part of it. That's okay. 
but seeds are planted. They know I'm here and I'm not going anywhere and I love them and I'm, I'm trying, you know, and mm -hmm. because eventually walls are going to break down. They're going to see that. And then your relationship years later is going to be phenomenal. So, you know, I, I think that's one approach as guys, if, if we can do things that way, that totally changes. But like in the current state, we always, you know, always believe that if you're new in the blended family as the man of the house, you don't come in guns a blazing, right? You know, especially with your bonus kids, we always say parent behind the scenes. So we want to approach that relationship initially. It's going to change, right? But initially we want to approach it like the fun uncle. You know, if you approach it like the fun uncle, like, hey, I'm here. We're going to have some fun, you know, and, yeah. and kind of do it that way. Y'all's relationship will start growing. But if I come in there guns a blazing, I'm the man of the house. I'm the dad here. You will do what I say, kid. Then all I'm doing is pushing them away. I will push them away and I will damage that relationship because they don't receive that, especially if their other parent is still in the picture. If their biological dad is still in the picture, uh, that's just going to push them towards their biological dad. And then you're going to have their dad mad at you. You don't talk to my kids that way. And then you're like, I'll talk however I want because I'm a guy, you know, and, and then you get this back and forth. And, and you now, have a duel out in the front yard. Yeah. And then now y'all both are fighting. And then what does that tell the kids? You know, what are we modeling for our kids? Right. And that's, that's what I always take it back to. How do I want my son to be? How do I want my son to act? How do I want my son to treat other people? And how do I want other people to treat, you know, me? I've got to treat other people that same way, you know? And so we have to get out of that macho pride stuff. And, you know, it's the long game that we're doing, right? But whenever you approach it like that fun uncle, and then whenever you're seeing things that don't jive with you, like you're like, <laughs> I don't like it when you do that. You know, that's whenever you and your spouse are talking behind the scenes when closed doors at night and saying, hey, honey, I saw this, and man, that's really bad. <laughs> they shouldn't be doing that. What do you think? And then they're like, oh, I didn't realize that. I didn't see that. Well, you know, and then y'all talk through it. Then y'all come up with a way, and then if there's consequences that need to be had, then she's the one saying, hey, you know, I uh, saw this. This was an issue. This is what we're going to do from here on or something, you know. And so that's how you want to approach that. Now, yeah. eventually, over the years, as you and – your stepkids' relationships really start blooming and blossoming, you're going to get to be more of that authoritative figure, right? Yeah. So you're, you're going to be able to lay down consequences and things like that. You ease into that game. But it's not just automatic guns a blazing, right? It's a transition. And, and so we, we believe you build relationships before you come in with consequences and yeah. punishment. Like, if you ever have to question, like, should I say this? Should I do this? Like, Check your relationship. If it's not there, then don't be the one that's coming and that your only relationship is that negative side. Yeah. You want to build the positive side and strengthen that up. And that gives you that entryway and that right in to be able to speak into those other areas. You actually earn the kids respect in a sense to where they want to listen to you and they respect yeah. what you say, right? Because initially they're not. They're going to look at you as the opposition. They're going to look at you as somebody who is in my biological dad's place and you shouldn't be there, right? And so that's kind of the guard that they're going to have up whether they voice it or not. And so we have to sit there and, like I said, know the long game and sit there and try to transition them. And we do that with fun. We do that with connections. We do that over hanging out and things of that. And then that starts building that trust with them, showing that you're not going anywhere, that you love them, you care for them. And then you start getting it. You're able to speak into their lives from that. But until then, we're parenting behind the scenes. Uh, we're talking, you know, we're staying in good communication, us and our spouse, you know, we're doing that. And then if I have a biological kid, then, you know, we're staying yeah. in good conversation about, you know, that side of things too, right? So you and your spouse have to really be together on this. You have got to work together. And, you know, that's a beautiful thing because that grows your marriage. A lot of times you see the couples not working together and they just start holding anger and resentment towards each other. And that pulls your family away and you'll lead to another divorce. And you'll say, hey, let me go try again because the next one will be better. And no, because different step children, because you're still doing the same stuff. <laughs> you know, yeah. that doesn't bring you together. It's bringing you apart. So, you know... It, the, these are just things that we know bring you together. We've seen it time and time again. But another thing to do to help build that relationship, if you're sitting there and you're that stepdad going, I don't know how to come, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to build that relationship. 
we always believe in finding the common interest. And, you know, that's part of our belief and that's part of kind of our process. You know, we got a five part process, but this is part of that, that if you will take time to discover what they like doing, and then find the things that you also enjoy doing as well and start note, noting that, start writing that down. Yeah. And if you have a problem there, you know, maybe uh, they're the kids are young or maybe they're not young, maybe they're a teenager, whatever age, you're talking with their, their mom and you're like, hey, you know, what do they like doing? Like, you know them a whole lot better than I do, you know, depending on ages and how long y'all yeah. not, you know, are together and everything. But what do they like doing? You know, what really fires them up? What, what are some of their passions, some of the things that you've seen? And then, you know, well, they, they really like painting. They like, uh, they're artsy or they're sports. They're into oh, cars. They're, yeah. yeah, they're into cars, things like that. And so, you know, I'm writing some of those things down just so I don't forget. And, you know, whether it's a note on my phone or, you know, I'm writing it down just pen and paper, but I'm writing those things down. I'm looking, I'm like, oh, he likes cars? I love cars, you know, so that's, that's awesome. Okay, sweet. So I'm using that as an in and I'm being like, okay, I've found there's a car show or something coming up and I'm like, Hey, Joey, (laughs) Hey, Joey, there's this car show is really awesome. Going to have some sweet rides there. You want to go, you want to go with me? And you know, most of the time, if it's something within an interest that they yeah, have, yeah, stepdad, I want to go. They're like, hey, they haven't hit yeah. puberty yet, and, <laughs> and you're like, I'm paying, and I'm going to buy you a hot dog while we're uh, there. Yeah, totally <laughs> you going. So you're that fun uncle, right? But you're really but don't say, hey, I'm the fun uncle. Yeah, don't you're don't, the say that. Yeah, don't say that. Don't say that. But you're coming up with these fun things that they like doing and you like doing, and create an opportunity for y'all to do that together. And so now you are coming and you're bonding over cars dude, look at that car. That car is amazing. Oh, check out this ride. You know, that's relationship building because you're doing something new. You're creating an experience together, a moment together, and that's relationship building 101. You will start growing your relationships by then because later on, they're going to be like, hey, you remember that time we went and looked and saw that car? Yeah, that was amazing. You know, and maybe I'm taking the cars as an example and I see this really cool car. I'm taking a picture of it and sending it to them. Dude, check this car out. Just ran by this one. And then they're going to text back and be like, that's awesome. And then, you know, maybe they start shooting you a picture of a car or something and, you know, that becomes your thing. So you're creating these moments and... Uh, you don't just stop there. You know, maybe they really like food or, you know, I I always use the example of tacos. Maybe they love tacos and Mm -hmm. you're like, I love tacos. So, you know, Hey, there's this really cool taco place over here. I haven't tried it. You want to go grab a taco with me? You know, let's go try it out. Let's check it out. You know, and you're using that as that end where now y'all two are going and doing something together. Food Uh, and movies are a very easy end. And same thing with the ladies, you know, stepdaughters, you know, maybe there's this really cool uh, shop or something that they, you know, maybe they love going and looking at things. So, you know, you're taking them to the mall or you're taking them here. Maybe there are things food too, because ladies like the food too, you know, but they like some of the desserts or things like that. So maybe you're, you found this really cool dessert place, like ice cream. Hey, let's go grab this ice cream. And mm-hmm. like, heck yeah. yeah. Like, I'm down. So, you know, you're and going to the park. You're creating, right, right. Yeah. So you're creating these moments. You're, and what that is, is you're being intentional. You're discovering what they like doing. And you're taking some of those things, especially if you like doing them, and you're presenting opportunities. Hey, let's go check this out. And whenever you're doing that, your relationship building, you're building that trust, you're telling them uh, without telling them, I love you, I'm here for you, I want a relationship with you. And when you do that consistently, walls come down and they start trusting you and they start respecting you and they start seeing you as that father figure in their life. Now, depending on where you're at and you, you know, maybe you've been that type of, I'm not trying, I'm not doing this. And y'all's relationship is really like non-existent. You may try some of these things at first and you might get met with rejection because y'all haven't really built anything yet. But I think a lot of times we build up that that rejection is going to come and we kind of approach it with a sense of, well, let me just say this, but they're probably going to say no. 
But that a lot of times that's not the case. We that's true. think in our heads and we assume what's going to happen on the other end. But when we push past our own feelings in that area, we actually find that they say yes more than they say no. They do. And especially when it's over something fun, you know, and that, that's what we always say. That's why we say do something fun, do something new together, do something fun and new together. And you you're build your, your relationships like twice as fast. But it is one of those things that you approach them with the excitement. Like if I approached, if I approached my my stepson, and I said, "Hey, um, there's kind of this car show in town. You want to go?" They'd be like, eh, "I'm playing video games," <laughs> you know. But well, and it, to me, if I hear that, I'm thinking, "Mom made you come over here and invite sure, me." <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, but you know, there's this. If I don't have that buy into it. Yeah. They're definitely not, you know, they amplify what you're giving them, right? But if I come up there and I'm like, hey, dude, man, there's this amazing car show. They're going to have like this GT, blah, 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 you know, whatever with an engine, blah, 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 you know, and ooh, and I even heard that they're going to have this and this and this there. You want to come check it out with me? They're going to be like excited too, like, yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, you know, it, it's all about presentation too. If you come with passion and excitement, you're paving that way for them to say yes and be like, yeah, I'm excited too. You just made me excited about this. But if I come with a, Hey, um, this is happening. Uh, do you want to maybe hang out or something? <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> so then, awkward. then they're going to be like, uh, bad vibes happening right here. Yeah. I'm going to pass. You look like a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it is on that approach, but come with that passion, that excitement. And I'm telling you, you'll win hearts there. And if you come with that passion and excitement and they still sit there and meet with rejection, then, uh, that's fine. That's where you go to that mindset saying, you know what, seeds are planted. Be like, all right, that's cool. Uh, maybe next time. And let that be your out. You walk away. But you don't stop. You know, you come up and you try something new next time. Uh, we always say to, you know, it, this is something to be intentional. If you're going to be intentional about this, uh, try at least once a month. You know, once a month, come up with something. You know, right now, figure out those common interests. Yeah. And then... Uh, come and uh, pick out one thing a month and then approach them. You know, put it on the calendar. If they say yes, write it on the calendar, put it in your phone, whatever, and then y'all message, build up the excitement to it. Oh, it's two weeks away. I can't wait. You know, things like that. But uh, try once a month, always presenting an opportunity to do something new, to do something fun, uh, you know, and it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be going and grabbing a taco at the new taco shop, you know, uh, yeah. something like that. It doesn't have to be really expensive. It doesn't have to be a big going out, but, you know, always plan something, always do uh, at least something once in the month. work. Right. And we do have a template for this. Like if you're like, okay, I'm hearing you, but I'm picking different parts of it. So we'll put that in the show notes as well. If you just like a little one pager thing that you can print out and it's easy of like, I'm writing down my top 10 things. Uh, my spouse is writing down their top 10 things. And then we're writing down some things with the kids so that it just makes it visually like, okay, I can see here are those common interests. So we put that together for you. And that way you can like look at it, pick that date, put it on the calendar. Of course, you're planning according to the weekend that you have them, right? Like, so it doesn't cause any issues that they're not going to be there or that you have to work around. But making it intentional of picking and putting it on the calendar and putting it somewhere that everybody can see gets you excited. You're looking forward to it. People aren't forgetting about it. And when other things come up, you're able to say, oh, no, sorry, me and Joey, we're going to the car show um, that weekend. You know, maybe you and the girls, y'all go do your thing or whatever. Yeah. So it is one of those, right? It's, you know, just a shout out to the dads. You know, your family needs you. They need you plugged in emotionally physically you know they need you you know and when we're not plugged in our family struggles you know they will have a lot of struggles this world would be a different place if all the daddies were doing the daddy business yeah no <laughs> no joke but especially in a blended family that just means we have to be even more intentional we have to be even more present because there's already a lot of obstacles and challenges coming against us mm -hmm. so just being able to approach it from a fresh new mindset of saying you know what all right you know, I do, I'm 
not thinking about the short game anymore because the short game is really, you know, is really challenging. But I'm thinking about the long game here and remembering I'm the mature one. They're still growing in maturity. So, you know, I, I get that. But I'm here. I'm standing firm. I love them. I'm going to continue trying because eventually – they're going to see that, and then our future relationships are going to be awesome. You know, our next 40 years are going to be really fun together, you know, yes. and uh, that that's what we want. That's what we're really going after. So let that just be encouragement. But, you know, for the time being, start finding those common interests together and, you know, get with your spouse and y'all start talking about some of those things and some things that you could possibly do, toss around some ideas. And then once a month, just present those opportunities, you know, with them and do it individually. If there are multiple kids, you know, you want to build those relationships because as guys, we, you know, just as people, I think we just hate awkwardness and we hate that, uh, uh, kind of confrontation, uh, but that's just part of it. That's part of any relationship building is it is going to be a little awkward at first because y'all don't really know each other just super well yet. Yeah. But, and it, there's going to be times of confrontation and there's going to be times of confrontation, but every time I have met confrontation head on and I met it with love in my heart, mm-hmm. we have always grown stronger on the other side of yeah, it. It's not a bad thing. When every time that I've run from it, it's just brought more tension, more stress, more anxiety from it. Yeah. So, you know, don't don't think of it as a bad thing. Think of it as an opportunity for us all to grow. And whenever we do it, when we approach it with love in our hearts, man, you will grow every time and the relationships will just, you know, excel from that. But uh, good stuff. Just be encouraged, you know, and, and I think that's the biggest thing for guys. Just know that you play such an important role, especially in a blended family. We have to be even more intentional and whenever you do, that's when you see the fruit in your family oh. is whenever you step in and don't give up. You know, I'm don't, excited, don't quit. I'm excited don't quit. to hear from you guys of the change that's taking place because the guys are yeah. stepping up. Yeah. Yeah. We're stepping up. We're stepping up to the plate saying, Hey, bada, bada, swing, bada, bada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There it I is. I love you. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so now listen, we'll put some stuff in the show notes as well. You know, if y'all need some more resources, things like that. You know, we'll be there, but really that's the heart of it is don't give up. You know, let's set our pride and, and, you know, we don't lose our man card by showing up with love. In fact, we actually earn even more, you know, by doing that. We don't push family away. We actually pull family towards us when we show up with love in our hearts and uh, just step in and be there, you know, just be there and, you know, be that, be that male figure in your household and just be like, I love y'all. I'm here. I'm not going nowhere. You know, let's do this. Let's do life. Let's do uh, it. But there you go. There it is. So how do you, uh, how can stepdads bond with their stepkids? Show up. Be there. Don't yeah. quit. Don't quit. So take some of those tools, take some of those things, and just let that be a blessing for you. And let y'all's rela- relationships really blossom. <laughs> yes. There it is. Blossom. <laughs> All the man stuff right there. Boom. In a nutshell. That's we love it. you guys. Mic drop. <laughs> Woo. Booyah. Go eat a taco. <laughs> <laughs> go eat a taco. <laughs> That's the motto. Go Stop eat a taco. listening right now. <laughs> Invite your stepkid to go eat a taco. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you later. Take care, guys. Love y'all. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us today. We hope this episode has been a blessing and encouraged your family journey. Make sure you stay connected with us and join our weekly blended family newsletter. We send an email out every Friday morning full of support and encouragement. And when you join, we also want to give you a free gift. So go get yours today. The link is in the show notes below. Have an amazing day. Remember to enjoy the journey with your blended family. And we'll see you on the next episode.